Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. This is the Orca, a 3D printed AR-15, which we've been shooting in this video. The goal of this project was to print as many of the components as possible on the AR-15 um, on a common 3D printer. The uh, parts that are printed here, we have the lower receiver, of course, which is the serialized legal part of the firearm. That's the part we normally print when printing AR-15s. We normally buy completed uppers and other components. But here I wanted to take it a step further. So the lower and the upper receiver, the handguard, the uh, barrel nut, the buffer tube, the stock, uh, your castle nuts, end plates, takedown pins, all of those components have been replaced or made unnecessary by the 3D printed part. So the scope of this build is a lot bigger than just a 3D printed lower receiver. Now the reason I'm doing this video is to let you guys know that this platform is now available for you to print. So I'm not going to give you any links or anything direct here because YouTube and we want to stay on the platform as long as we can. But uh, out on the odd sea, Google is your friend, Hoffman Tactical. Uh, the Orca is the name of the project. So the Orca version 5.3 is the current release version, 3D printed AR-15. Uh, you can find it with a little bit of looking. Uh, check out my website. Um, just Google is your friend, as I said. And uh, you can print this yourself. It is a documented project. Uh, it's uh, a lot of detailed instructions, so this should be a pretty uh, awesome build if you're interested in doing it. So this has now been released. Uh, beta testing has been finished, and uh, it is ready to go. <laughs> project uh, was not without its issues. We fixed most of them and right now it's actually been running extremely reliably with reasonable accuracy. I still have to do more testing with accuracy as we go on with the newer versions, which I have several of them right here uh, to do testing with as we move forward. You can check out some of my earlier videos I did with an earlier version doing accuracy testing with it. We actually put quite a few rounds through it. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link up above here for you guys to check out. Um, so go ahead and do that. This is, as I said, uh, a lot of testing was done on this. We did a couple months of beta testing. However, there are probably still issues. So definitely, I am very interested in the people in the community who are making manufacturing, printing this for themselves. Any little issues you have, please let me know. Uh, head out to my website. You can contact me there. Yeah, shoot me an email, social media, whatever. Let me know what issues come up, uh, what failures you have, and we want to continue improving the Orca as we go uh, to make it as effective as we can. I wanted to make this build as accessible as possible. So most of it can actually be printed with ordinary PLA Plus. This is the Polymaker PLA Pro. The parts that really need to be made from a more uh, high grade filament is the barrel mount, which is the clamshell that actually captures the barrel uh, inside of the upper receiver. That really should be printed from a polycarbonate or a carbon fiber nylon, which is what I use. The clips should also be printed from something that is stronger than an ordinary PLA Plus. The clips are the tapered mounts that hold on the handguard and the uh, buffer tube and the stock to the receivers, and they're very important uh, that they're a strong plastic. I've been using a polycarbonate, um, so I recommend that. All of that is in the documentation for you to read on. If you can't print with carbon fiber nylon and you want to use that, I do have parts kits out on my website which you can buy that come with all of the 3D printed components um, from the clips to the uh, barrel mount that, that require more advanced material and then you would just print all of the PLA Plus parts yourself uh, on your printer that is capable of printing PLA Plus and then you can move forward with the entire build without having to print with high temperature filament. So that is an option for those who want to go with it. Um, but if you want to source the parts yourself, that's still an option. It's all in the documentation and uh, everything is printable or relatively readily sourceable. The AR-15 parts that we're using in this build are of course the barrel, the muzzle device, our bolt carrier group, our charging handle, and then a uh, stripped down lower parts kit. Uh, so the takedown pins, the buffer retainer, and some of the other parts here aren't actually needed, so we don't have them here. Um, so it's a stripped down lower parts kit, and then obviously our buffer spring and buffer. So it is more of a minimum number of AR parts you need. You don't need the handguard, the uh, barrel nut, uh, the upper, lower, buffer tube, castle nuts. A lot of those parts are made unnecessary with this build. So it's just kind of a, the core of the rifle you still need to purchase, but uh, it's quite a bit more economical than trying to build a more conventional AR-15 with factory components. rifle was not designed in a vacuum. I took inspiration from a number of other projects and designers. Uh, the big one was Proto Firearms. He is here on YouTube. Be sure to check out his channel. He's also on uh, Instagram at Proto Firearms. So uh, he's done some really cool stuff. He was the first one I saw who was actually printing AR-15 uppers and successfully testing and shooting them. He was doing that um, quite a while ago now. 
more than a year, two years ago. Um, so he's been he's been working on that for a while, and he did some um, interesting early work, and uh, he made a very excellent suggestion to this project, which actually made it possible, and that was taking the magazine and angling it forward. So a big issue we had very early on was the uh, the bullets. The tip of the bullet was catching on the plastic part of the feed ramp because on an M4 feed ramp, your feed ramp is split between your barrel extension and the lower receiver, and the plastic was wearing down, and bullets were getting caught underneath the barrel extension. No good. So he actually came up with a solution to this, which he suggested to me, and I have used it on the Orca and it has worked flawlessly and that is angling the magazine forward just a little bit about two degrees so that the rounds can be successfully stripped off of the magazine straight onto the steel feed ramps on the barrel extension without any problems. Um, so that is uh, was really cool and big shout out to uh, Jake from Proto Firearms. The barrel mount on this guy is a clamshell barrel mount. I actually took this from uh, Ivan the Trolls uh, MP5, the KF5, it's a 3D printed MP5, and he used a clamshell barrel mount. I am using a modified version of that. Mine is tapered, it presses in, but it came directly from the KF5, which I believe originally came from Ivan's uh, Set Me, a 308 uh, roller delayed 308 build. So big shout out to Ivan uh, for working on that. We actually are using a fiberglass sleeve around the gas tube. It protects the handguard and importantly the barrel mount and the hose clamp area right up front from the heat of the gas tube, which is the most intense heat on the rifle. That was actually uh, came from Invader Zip, who used a PTFE tube on his ARC 2.0, which was, uh, I think, a great idea, and I just kind of took a modified version of that, and I'm using a silicone-coated fiberglass sleeve uh, to cover the uh, gas tube, but it's a very similar concept. Next one is the developers of the Biden's Bane, which is the first uh, public release, I believe. Well, that's not true. Second, Proto Firearms did his first, but the Biden's Bane is another 3D printed upper receiver, a very cool project that came out a little while ago, and it uses a steel tube or steel bushing inside uh, of the front of the upper receiver to support the gas tube and help distribute the heat so that the gas tube doesn't melt in the plastic, causing it to shift, causing a problem. So I just took that one step further and we're actually using a ceramic insert. It's a ceramic standoff, which is insulating inside of the uh, barrel mount, which protects the barrel mount from the gas tube and it's worked phenomenally. So we've never had any problems with gas tubes melting because of that. So big shout out to the developers of the Biden's Bane uh, for coming up with that. Also, uh, Middleton made and uh, Chairman Wan both made uh, actually quite helpful, remarkably helpful suggestions on building this right here. So the integrated grip is, Chairman is the one who convinced me to do that. And then uh, Middleton made, made some very, very clever suggestions on how he uses CAD to save a lot of time when doing uh, design work in order to make basically this nice streamlined profile with a split line. I won't get into the details here, but big shout out to Middleton and Chairman uh, for their suggestions on this project. Last but not least, of course, is all the beta testers who helped with this. Um, there were a number of them who did a lot of printed several versions of these, found lots and lots of problems, and this is a much, much better gun now that it's come out of beta testing than when it went into beta testing. So big thanks, guys, to all my beta testers. Very, very helpful, and uh, I hope to be with you guys on the next uh, project we work on, so that should be super cool. This entire video was intended just to let you know that this rifle has now been released. I am going to be doing more contact with it in the future, doing testing with it. So not too much of that in this video, but I hope you guys found this interesting. I want to let you guys know that it is now available and that we are uh, moving forward with the project. So please check out the files for this. A uh, very cool build. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys again next week.